Welcome to the video everyone and today we'll be looking at 5 mistakes that you want to avoid when playing so rare. Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome to the video. I hope you're all good. And as mentioned in the intro, probably the title as well. Today, we'll be looking at common mistakes made when playing so rare, five in particular, and we'll be looking at how to counteract that to best improve your so rare experience and hopefully bring you more success on the platform. Before we get into the mistakes, so if you could show your support by hitting the like button and pressing subscribe as well, that would be awesome. We've recently hit 100 subscribers so thank you very much for that and to thank you guys for that we will be doing a giveaway i mentioned it in one of the first couple of videos but it is coming up all you need to do to be involved is to like a video why not make it this one and subscribe to the channel and feel free to get involved in the comments below with your so rare tips but anyway let's get right into the video shall we with mistake number one now this one is a bit cheeky don't shoot me but Make sure when you join so rare you use someone's affiliate link. Obviously, I'd greatly appreciate it if it was mine, which you can find in the description before you sign up to so rare. That would obviously help support the channel. But in general, seriously, I do mean it. Don't join so rare without an affiliate link. Whether it's mine or someone else's, make sure you use one because what it means is when you buy five cards off the new card auctions market, you will get an extra one added to your account completely free. So I do really mean it. If you're going to get involved in so rare, use an affiliate link. Even if you don't plan on buying any cards and you just want to play in the casual free leagues, then go for it, but still use that affiliate link just in case you change your mind down the line. Now into the second mistake people often make and that is by getting sucked in by FOMO. I think every so rare player out there, every so rare manager who's been at this for a while will say they've experienced some FOMO at some point and made a few wrong decisions. And it does make you think, wow, I never want to do that again. But it is really easy to get sucked in. If you don't know what FOMO is, it's the fear of missing out. And in a game like so rare, where of course there's actually monetary value to these cards, it can sometimes feel like you need to act quick, you need to get in on this before someone else does, buy that wonder kid before everyone else buys him. It really doesn't have to be like that. And when you're playing so rare, you should always have a plan in mind do some research and don't just run and gun. It's easy to see a 16 year old score, get excited and buy all of his cards up in the hope that he's going to be the next Lionel Messi, but it doesn't always work like that. It very well might, I'm not saying they'll be messy, but you might have success there, but make sure you're doing your research and don't get pulled in by FOMO. I've experienced this massively when trying to get teams. For example, when I was trying to buy my Wolfsburg players, I had four of the players I needed, but I wanted one more. And I could definitely have got him cheaper if I was bidding for him and I made offers on the market. But after a couple of my offers got rejected, I got panicky, I got FOMO. I thought I don't want his price to rise anymore when he's the last piece I need for my team and I overpaid and bought one straight off the manager's market and I wish I'd waited made a few more offers maybe even just thought about it a week or so before and planned it way in advance so I wasn't rushing and not getting drawn in by FOMO because it's very easy to make bad mistakes when your mind is clouded by that feeling. Now the third common mistake that I see happening with a lot of so rare managers is making mistakes and not accepting them, not realizing that over the course of your so rare journey, particularly in the early stages, you are probably gonna make a few mistakes and get things wrong. It's part of a learning curve, it's part of the process. But when these mistakes happen, you want to do your best to learn from them. Realize what you did wrong, how you could have improved. For example here, my biggest mistake and the one thing that I always talk about on so rare is my rare team and having to buy a striker and go in for Brian Linson. I didn't do too much research, I just saw him, I saw that he started for Feyenoord, but I didn't look at things such as, was there a young promising player underneath him who would have the opportunity if Linson didn't play well, which ended up being the case. Cyril Dessers started playing for Feyenoord at the time, and it meant Linson got dropped. Before I knew it, he'd been moved on, he's now playing in the Japanese divisions, and my card that was worth 0.3 ETH at the time, and this was in ETH's peak as well, so he was worth something like 600 700 quid, he's now worth 300 pounds, and I've made a massive, massive loss on Brian Linson. Since then, I've had successes with cards where I've had cards that have gone up in value more than what I've lost in Brian Linson, and I think I've definitely learned my lesson about rushing into players and not doing research. That's not to say I'll never make the mistake again. The world of football is very turbulent, anything can happen. But the worst thing I could have done is just gone, oh, I got that one wrong. Let me just buy another striker for 600 pound now because I need a striker in my team. No, you've got to be a bit smarter than that. You've got to learn from your mistakes. And um, I don't think I'll ever buy another Brian Linson card again. 
Now we get on to mistake number four, and that is not doing your research on players, which I've covered in a couple of these points already so far, but I'm just going to talk about ways where you can research players and do it in the best way possible. So one thing that I think you should always avoid is buying players from leagues you have no clue about. If you do want a player from a league you don't know something about, research the league, research the clubs before you get in to buying them players. It'll be really easy to see a player scoring loads in Japan, go and buy him and then realize the Japanese league's finished in February and he's not gonna play for another four months. Those kind of things happen more often than you would think. So make sure when you're buying players, I always say buy players from leagues, that you know something about and clubs that you know something about and don't just run and gun on players that you have no idea about. Case in point being Brian Linson once again but there's some tools that can help you. Of course you've got so rare data where you can see the history of players. I know that so rare data have changed recently and you need a membership to use all of their features but there's other ways to track player performances and scores over time. I also like to use Transfer Mark to track player career progression, rumors, and that kind of thing to see if a player is a worthwhile investment. You can also track players' medical history in here. For example, if I wanted to buy Geordie Classy before I bought him, even if everything in So Rare looked good, I just check a few things. For example, I'll check how he's performed across all of his seasons in real life. Has he recently moved to a club? Was he a big investment? Is he likely to play? Then you can go to injury history and see, is he injury? prone? How often has he had injuries? Has he only recently just recovered from a major injury? All of this should go into your research, I believe, before buying a player in so rare. I mean, if you want, spend your money willy-nilly, but for me, I'm happy to play so rare and have that little bit of risk in there as well because I actually enjoy playing the game and I think people don't count that into the monetary value enough of the game sometimes, but I still don't want to just fire my money out into the middle of nowhere and never see it at all again. I want to make sure that I'm at least trying to make Good decisions. You can even get involved in fan discussions. Use Discord. The So Rare Discord is great. But I'm sure there's Discords for football clubs out there as well, where you can chat to people. Who are the best players? Who are the worst players? Is someone likely to leave? You can check transfer rumors on here as well. One thing I also always do is just search the player's name because you might search Geordie Classy and see loads of transfer news articles about him being linked away from the club or something about him picking up a major injury. And this is where you can find all that information. So you don't have to do absolutely everything that I've said in this point, but just make sure you're trying to research the players the best you can. As mentioned in point three, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have to learn from them, but just do your best to make sure you've given yourself as much of a chance as possible of having a successful buy in So Rare by doing your research. Now for point number five, it's being mindful of your So Rare gallery. And if it's rewards you're trying to win, then I will always say, unless you've got a massive, massive budget, then quality over quantity is so, so important. You might want to enter five different competitions in So Rare and you want to buy five teams with one Ethereum. It can be done, but maybe it would be better to only enter two competitions, to only have two teams from that same one ETH because then you could build a much better side for each competition and chances are you'll stand a much better chance of getting good worth Ryle rewards. Hitting a tier one or star reward three or four times a season with your PSG stack might make more sense than having five teams for every now and then pick you up a tier three, tier two reward, which is of course still great, but it just might make more sense for your club. So for that reason, I will always say quality over quantity, and it's something I need to rectify soon. The reason for that is I've got involved in the limited competitions this year, and I'm having a lot of fun with it because there's actually rewards there for me to be won, whereas my all-star rare team, the players that I've got, they're never really going to win me a reward card. And even though they can get me thresholds, would I rather sell them and invest it in my limited team to have that fun time of potentially winning some rewards? I don't know. It's something I need to think about. It's something I need to get involved with. But as mentioned before, we're not going to do any FOMO. We're not going to mass sell. We're going to do our research, play it safe, wait until the right time. And then if I want to move players on, I'll have made that decision and stuck to it for a few days about what I know I want to do with my club. So that's something I'll always say. Focus on quality over quantity. There are of course going to be some exceptions if you've got a massive budget and you want the world's biggest so rare gallery then go ahead, do your thing. Maybe you want to come into So Rare, never play a game, but just buy Wonder Kids and players who have a bright future ahead of them in the hope of making some profit there. That would also be a good idea too, but make sure you stick to your game plans. I think the general takeaway from this video, probably because of the fact I've said it 15 times, is it's simple. In all cases, 
do your research, don't rush into things. I think it will really benefit your so rare experience on the platform. But anyway, that is the end of today's video. Five common mistakes to avoid in so rare. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the so rare content so far here on the channel. I know I am. I've really enjoyed making it. So if you've got any video suggestions, drop them in the comments. But most of all, have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.